Hello and welcome to this episode of This Is Automation. I'm your host, Corey Dallas. Super happy to have you here with us today. So today we're going to be talking about AGVs and AMRs. How do they work? What's the difference between them? We're going to be covering all of that in just a second. But before we do that, I want to tease out the next few episodes. And I want to ask you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, so if any of these sound interesting to you, make sure you subscribe. You can do that by just hitting the button below and also set up notifications. So that way, anytime we go live, like we are right now, uh, or we release a new video or podcast episode, you'll get a notification so you can come check it out. So some of the things we have coming up are syncing and sourcing IO. So common source of confusion. We're going to clear all that up in that episode. Then we'll be doing PID control in 10 minutes. We're going to cover everything you could possibly want to know about PID in just 10 minutes. From there, we're going to be continuing our PLC basics series by talking about ladder logic. It's probably one of the most common languages out there in industrial automation. So we're going to cover the introduction to that. Uh, you won't come out of this an expert by any means, but we will cover the basics. So at least you'll be able to look at a ladder diagram or ladder logic program and know what's going on. And you can probably actually program one yourself. Then the next week, we're going to throw that ladder logic right in the garbage where it belongs. All kidding aside, there are perfectly good use cases for ladder logic. Um, but what we are seeing is more and more applications are actually being deployed with a text-based language, something like structured text. So structured text is one of the more common ones out there. So we're going to talk about how to program in structured text and also look back at ladder logic to compare a little bit some of the differences, how you would do something in ladder versus how you would do it in structured text. So again, you may not come out of this an expert. You, you will definitely come out of this knowing how to program structured text and be on the way to deploying your first structured text program. So we're excited about that one, but let's talk about today. So we're gonna be talking about AGVs and AMRs. Let's go ahead and switch over. So AGVs and AMRs are kind of a hot topic these days. AGVs have actually been around for quite some time, um, you know, on the order of 50 or so years. Uh, the first uh, AGVs were coming out. They've gotten much smarter and there's different ways of implementing them now. So we'll talk through some of that. But the first thing I want to do is just explain what the difference is. So what is the difference between an AGV and an AMR? Well, an AGV is an automated guided vehicle. Okay, that doesn't tell you much more. An AMR is an autonomous mobile robot. It's like, am I playing a trick on you? These sound like the same thing. And to be fair, there there is a little bit of, of marketing at play here. Uh, so, so there's a very fine line of differentiation between an AGV and an AMR. And you could probably argue that they are you know different... Uh, uh, implementations of pretty much the same thing. So they both do the same thing, the same goal, right? They want to move something from point A to point B uh, in an intelligent fashion, in an automated fashion, um, so that we can eliminate, uh, you know, safety issues from humans doing this job and also improve efficiency for, for a, you know, a lights out type of operation. So when we look at the difference between an AGV and an AMR, the first thing and probably the most important thing is that an AGV is operating a on fixed paths or fixed routes. So a fixed route is basically, you know, we mentioned we, we're moving things from point A to point B. The way that I can get to from point A to point B is, is pretty much fixed, okay? Um, when we look at AMRs though, it's a little different. So we would call this free navigation. Um, it's a little bit more like what you would experience with your GPS. So you still wanna get from point A to point B, but depending on the traffic conditions, depending on uh, you know, if there's an accident or some sort of obstacle in the road, for example, it may take you different paths. So with an AMR, we can get to the same place using different paths, and that may increase our efficiency. The other thing that an AMR can do is actually be a little more flexible because we're taking in all of the environmental considerations, you know, pretty much at runtime to identify the best path. That means that we can expand an AMR based system a little bit faster and cheaper then we can do that with an AGV based system where we have fixed paths. And so we have to kind of define all of that manually. So let's look at a, a quick use case of that um, to, to try to drive that point home. So this is an example of an AGV automated guided vehicle. So in this case, again, we've got you know two points that we can go to. We're starting from maybe a, a docking station or charging station. So the two gray rectangles there indicate the two locations that we can go. So let's say we pick one that we wanna go to, okay? Our, uh, system level has has told us that we need to go to this location to pick something up okay so I have this one path to get there which is fine I can drive that path all day long 
and be super efficient and safe. Um, but again, the key difference here that we want to look at is the additional flexibility that you can get with an AMR. So what happens if I'm on my path and there's an obstacle in the way? Now that could be a short-term obstacle like someone walking through the aisle or maybe you know a uh, fork truck operator left a pallet in the middle of my path. Well, what can I do? Nothing. <laughs> so as an AGV, I can do nothing except for sit and wait, okay? So from a safety perspective, there's some mis misinformation I think about the safety differences between AGVs and AMRs, and AGV is, is perfectly safe, right? So we've got all this same type of safety sensors on an AGV. When this kind of incident happens, the AGV is not gonna drive into the obstacle, but it will just stop, okay? So what does that mean? Okay, I'm in a safe condition, great, but now my efficiency is dropping rapidly, and this could potentially impact the flow of material through my entire facility just because this one AGV is stopped. So how can an AMR change that a little bit? So remember, an AMR is using more of a GPS type system. It's not actually GPS, but it, it's an easy analogy to think of. So let's say we wanna get from point A to point B, the same point A and same point B. The, the path may be the exact same as it would have been for an AGV, that, that optimal path, if there's nothing else going on. So we'll start along that path. And again, let's say we hit an obstacle. Well, in, in the use case of an AGV, we just stop because we can't veer off of our path. But because an AMR has some additional sensing technology and some additional control algorithms, we can actually maneuver around that object. So with the AMR, we get some additional flexibility to not only optimize our path based on known variables, but also to optimize our path based on some of these unknown disturbances that may exist in the environment. And we can do that at real time. Okay, so that means I can actually get from point A to point B, even if something has changed in my environment, even if something you know steps in front of me or uh, something happens in my environment that's a little bit different than it was when we first commissioned the system. So that's the main difference between them. Now, that's really, uh, at least from my perspective, the biggest differences between them, and ultimately they work on the same principles. So we'll talk through uh, four main principles uh, that should help you understand how these systems work. So the first is navigation, then we'll look at safety, traffic and collision, and then a system level or management uh, level uh, type of operation. So the first one is navigation. There are tons of different ways uh, to navigate an AGV or, or an AMR. The most common is some sort of laser-based triangulation or LIDAR-based system. Um, in, in this instance, there's some sort of laser scanner on the vehicle. Um, and from there, maybe there's reflectors uh, in known locations around the plant or around the facility. And I can determine my position relative to those reflectors. And so I, I kind of always know where I am. And then in conjunction with the encoders on my wheels and other sensing, I have a good idea of where I am and where I'm going. Okay, so that's basically how the navigation works. I mean, it's a little bit different for an AMR where you may have some additional machine vision uh, type of operations to detect the environment um, as, as far as from a free navigation perspective. And in AGVs, you may see other types of applications as well for navigation. Um, oftentimes you'll see like a magnetic strip uh, installed in the floor of the facility or magnetic pucks uh, or even uh, some you know photochemical uh, lines painted on the floor for the AGV to follow. So lots of different ways to navigate, but ultimately, you know, the key point here is that the AGV needs to know where it is in the environment and where it's going. So it uses a combination of sensors to accomplish that. Looking forward to safety. Uh, again, safety is pretty similar between an AGV and an AMR. The kind of uh, simple way to say it is, hey, if something uh, steps in front of this, uh, stop. Um, there are some more intelligent systems being developed now or actually already deployed now where you've got multiple zones around a AGV or AMR. So we're seeing something like that here where the closest areas to the AGV or AMR, if we detect something in that area, we pretty much want to immediately stop. But there are some areas outside of that. Let's say someone is, is walking across an aisle uh, 10 feet away from the AGV we probably don't need to stop immediately. That could reduce our efficiency. Um, so by using this intelligent safety sensing system, we can actually just slow down in the event that we do need to stop, but just slow down. And then as that obstruction or obstacle leaves my field, my safety field, then I can speed back up. 
And then the area outside that would be considered a, a fully safe zone. So if anything was, you know, passing uh, uh, or, or some obstacle was present and it was just outside of that range, we would pretty much not do anything. We would just operate as normal. Now, typically there's a, a, some sort of fail safe system on an AGV or AMR as well. Some sort of, you know, mechanical limit switch or bumper, um, physical bumper on, on the system, uh, just in the event that these safety systems uh, don't work but obviously there's redundancy and such in these systems to make sure that they are safe. And typically these AGVs and AMRs are, are, are safely limited in their speed as well. Uh, so hopefully uh, if, if it's a person in the way, they'll be able to get out of the way, even if you know, a redundant safety system fails, which is incredibly unlikely. So these systems are, are ultimately very, very safe. Okay, so moving on to traffic and collision avoidance, we looked at, at the use case earlier where it's just one AGV and he can go from point A to point B to point C uh, with, with, with not a care in the world. But that system gets a little more complicated just as soon as you add one more AGV or one more AMR. Then we have the question of how do I manage traffic and how do I make sure that these AGVs aren't going to collide with each other? Okay, so there's a couple different ways to manage this. You can break off zones. So, you know, an AGV can basically declare, hey, I, I'm in this zone, please don't enter this right now until I leave and then you can come in. Um, so that requires some sort of system level management, uh, which we'll talk about in just a second. But the other one is, is really just what we talked about, some sort of local or discrete collision avoidance. Um, so in a worst case scenario, uh, an AGV or AMR is going to stop before it hits another one, but because of the traffic management and system management, um, you know, types of operations that are happening, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so system level, right? How how does an an AGV or AMR even know where to go in the first place? And then how do we make sure they're not hitting each other? This is really you know the heavy lifting of an AGV or AMR system. There's a lot of software out there that does this traffic management. Um, collision management, you know, system level uh, type of stuff. This system is usually going to be connected to uh, some sort of orders processing ERP type system uh, that tells, you know, fr from a, a, a facility level, what material needs to be moved where for the process. So whether that's in a, a logistics or distribution uh, facility or a hospital or a manufacturing facility, ultimately we're moving material from point A to point B and that movement is triggered by something. So we wanna be connected to the system that, that is managing that trigger. And then from there, you know, our, our system level software is going to be you know, kind of architecting which AGV or AMR is, is doing which functions and also managing you know, the traffic to make sure that there's no collisions or backups or anything, um, because that can certainly bring the efficiency to a screeching halt. So again, there's, there's always a local control on the AMR or AGV. It's gonna be handling safety functions. It's gonna be handling the drive, uh, you know, steering and, and drive of the vehicle. Um, it's gonna be handling the sensing, but then there's also a system level control, which is usually PC-based control, um, that, that's telling each of these different AMRs or AGVs what to do and how to interact with each other. Okay? So that's pretty much it. When you look at an AGV and AMR system, it's it's a pretty simple operation when you break it down. It can be kind of uh, complex or overwhelming when you walk into a facility and you see all these AGVs uh, running around. But you know, if we break it down to kind of its constituent components, um, it's really not that complicated. You've just got your navigation systems, your safety systems, collision and, and traffic management, and then your system management. Um, and from there, it's it's pretty simple. Now, that's not to say that the algorithms and such that are in those different systems aren't complicated because they certainly are, um, but we're not gonna get into those today. It's a little bit out of scope for us as far as how do you how do you handle you know traffic avoidance and in uh, you know path planning, those kind of things. But again, I wanted you to learn one thing today. What is the difference between AGV and AMR so that you can start using the right one in the right context? To reiterate, an AGV is an automated guided vehicle, they operate on fixed paths or fixed routes, and an AMR is an autonomous mobile robot, and it has more free navigation, so it can be a little more flexible and adaptive. There's obviously pros and cons to each of these um, that we didn't get to cover today, but hopefully this gives you a pretty good understanding of the basics of an AMR or AGV system and how they work. So next time you walk into a facility and you see these little robots or vehicles, depending on which one they are, uh, zooming around, 
you'll know exactly what's going on and you can feel comfortable and safe uh, in the presence of those AMRs and AGVs. So hopefully this was a valuable introduction for you. Uh, if you have any other questions or want to get into a deeper technical discussion about these, uh, please just leave that in the comments below. We'll definitely uh, get back to you on that. And I just wanted to pose one question for everybody out there. So what is the difference between an AGV and an AMR? That's what we covered today, but I want to know which one is your favorite? Which one would you prefer to implement based on what you've seen today? Would you rather have an AGV or an AMR? Let me know down in the comments and we'll see which one is the winner. Okay, thank you everybody for joining this episode. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel and set up notifications. We've got some exciting, exciting episodes coming that we talked about at the top of the episode, so you definitely don't wanna miss those. I appreciate all of the shares, likes, and comments. They mean a lot, read everything. Um, so keep those coming, and thank you again. We'll see you next time on This Is Automation.